What is up my friends? My name is Guy. Welcome back to the channel and in this week's video I'm going to go over the top five fun and useful functions in Rome research. Some of those are a lot more fun than useful and others are a little more useful than fun but really that depends on your workflow so let's jump in. In fifth place we have the current time function. So if you go forward slash and type in current, it should pull up the current time function. You press enter and it just gives you the current time. And that is relatively useful if you're taking very detailed notes. So right now I am recording. Um, I believe I even have that in here. Top five fun and most useful functions in Rome research. So it just kind of connects a couple of different things. And uh, depending on how detailed your log needs to be for any given project, or if you just really like to know when exactly in a day you've had a certain thought that you write down, this is something that's relatively useful. It kind of depends on how detailed you want to go with your time log. If you need to chop down a time, sometimes people prefer to just keep it to the nearest hour. But since you have this useful function, you might as well, you know, go to the minute since that's what Rome has baked in instead of having to manually type out the hour every single time you create a note. In fourth place, we have forward slash today and forward slash tomorrow. And again, those are super intuitive. They do exactly what you think they do. They simply reference the current date or in the case of tomorrow, it references tomorrow's date. And that is useful in many different contexts, again, dependent on your workflow and what your current pain points are in your system. But the way I most commonly use it is probably for the most basic application. So right now I'm recording this video, but I actually have another video on Rome Research planned, which I'm looking to record tomorrow. So what I can do now is simply type in recording the biggest issues with Rome and how to solve them forward slash tomorrow. And what that's going to do is it's going to create a linked block in tomorrow's daily note section. So I can actually go to that note section by clicking on here. And that's what I'd be looking at tomorrow. And like you can see here, you see my plan for recording this video and I've tagged it with the correct date simply by typing in forward slash tomorrow. And of course, those are just specific applications of the date function in general. It's just something that's quite intuitive if you're thinking today or tomorrow, instead of having to open up the calendar every single time and clicking the correct date, this speeds things up a lot. If you oftentimes have short-term planning to do or just wanna you know, log something with the correct date, and it happens to be today or tomorrow. Now, the way I primarily use the today function is actually when I'm in a non daily note section page. So let's say I go to my video pipeline and here you can see that I'm looking to record this video. Now, if I'm in my pipeline, I can say, you know what, I'm, I'm looking to do this today. So I can simply type this in. And of course, what's going to happen is if I go to my daily note section, you can see that it once again referenced this video right in here and it tells me you know where this came from so now everything is nicely linked together and since i spend a lot of time in my daily notes section that is something that i really value and so it becomes really easy to tag certain thoughts in other pages with a date and that means they're all going to accumulate in the same daily notes section properly tagged in number three we have a function called drawing this one for me is a little more fun than useful but let's check it out by typing in forward slash drawing it opens up this little page here. And you can literally just draw whatever you want. You can pick a color here, let's say blue, and we can go, wow. So this is not very useful at all. What it's actually useful for is to draw things like diagrams. So we can get rid of this with the eraser here, and I could draw a fairly concrete diagram. So I'm looking to, let's say, do some, you know, content on Rome. And the reason why that's valuable is because any kind of visual functionality in Rome is still relatively lacking. So they do have a diagram function. They just opened up a table function, but they are more complicated than useful, at least the way they stand now, at least in my opinion. So I don't really like using those. And this is something that honestly is not very useful for me. It's more fun if I wanted to put a little drawing. I'm not sure why I would be drawing in my Rome, but if you have an Apple Pen or a trackpad or any more sophisticated way of actually 
putting visual things on the screen, this can be really useful because it just speeds up the workflow so much as opposed to having to do the rather programming heavy work in something like the diagram function. So if you've struggled with those functions and you have an easy way to actually precisely draw things, not like this catastrophe of like a Mickey Mouse-esque face that I drew on here. So if you have a way of actually neatly writing things down on the screen, you know, that looks a lot better than what I just did. Uh, this is something that's worth considering. What's also a lot of fun is lightly tapping the like button to make it turn blue. It's really nice for me. It's really nice for the algorithm. So if you think this third function's fun, tap the like button. If you think it's useful, tap the like button. And if you think it's neater, then it's a good thing that we're moving on to number two because hopefully that one delivers on its promises. In number two, we have got the forward slash slider. That one brings up this little functionality here where you can literally just give a rating from zero to 10. And then your little picture will show up underneath here. So that's useful if you have team functionality to get different ratings in on a certain topic or any given poll. But it's also useful for a bunch of other functions. So something that I like to do at the end of the day when I'm doing some reflective journaling is just to quickly give myself a rating in terms of my productivity or in terms of my happiness levels. What I started doing recently is actually tracking my sleep. And since I don't use like a super sophisticated, uh, you know, sleep ring, like the, like the aura ring or anything like that, I don't have this precise data. I'm just kind of doing a subjective rating for myself. And you know, the out of 10 rating is pretty intuitive to most people. So it's nice to just kind of wake up and say, you know what, how do I feel today? What do I think my rating out of 10 was for my sleep? And then when I'm doing a weekly review, I can look at those ratings overall and get a general sense whether I need to prioritize sleep health a lot more. The other application of this could be something like project tracking. And that's something that works well if you have you know, exactly 10 steps to get to your final goal. Unless you just wanna give yourself sort of a percentage rating, then anything out of 10 works very well. But sometimes this is less useful because if I'm doing a video series and let's say it involves five videos, yeah, I could technically just you know, move the slider forward by two every single time I finish a video. But for these kind of things, I've said in other videos too, uh, Notion's a lot more useful because it just gives you a lot more customizability for things like that. But for a simple slider, a simple rating out of 10 that has a nice visual element to it, this is a function that I would consider. In number one, shall we do another drum roll? Yes, let's do another drum roll. There you go, always so much fun. In number one, we have forward slash Pomodoro timer. If you haven't come across this before, it's a very simple function that brings up this little tomato timer, this kitchen clock, and it lets you put in how many minutes you want your timer to run for. Let's say we put one minute in, and then what's gonna happen is it brings up this little button here and you can simply click start, and then your countdown is on. So to show what happens at the end of the timer, if I just do a 0.1 minutes here and click start, it's going to count down for three, two, one and you get this little kitchen timer and it says Pomodoro completed. It says that was a short work session, no break for you, appreciate that. So like this little message suggests, the best application for this is for work sprints or any kind of sprints. This concept of sprint I discuss in my cave day video, but basically it's just a condensed period of time where you usually just wanna focus on one task so that you're really focused on the one thing at hand. And a Pomodoro timer can help you with this because you're not busy checking the time elsewhere. You know that when the work session is done, this little ding is gonna go off and uh, you can take a break or move on to the next task. There's a lot of research out there on the maximum time that we can focus on one task and some of those sources defer a little bit, but there seems to be a general consensus around this 25 minute mark, that it's a good idea to split up your work sessions into half hour blocks and working for 25 minutes and then taking a five minute break. And that is why when you type in Pomodoro, uh, it's automatically set to 25 minutes. So what we'd be doing here is click start and then your 25 minute work session has begun. But don't feel like this function is only reserved for scheduling sprints. It's useful in many other forms as well. So if I'm writing a paragraph for a video, for example, I can put myself on a timer to say, I'm gonna give myself 30 seconds to write this next paragraph. So right now I'm scripting something on Bitcoin versus gold in terms of hedges for inflation. So I can put myself on a timer to try and not second guess my writing as I'm doing it. So let's say I click start here and I'll just go. Boom, so there we go. 
very short paragraph. I would have liked to be able to write more in 30 seconds and I'm actually working on improving my typing speed at the moment, but that's something that just kind of keeps me more focused because I can't really give myself permission to stop writing and focus on something else even if it's a very small distraction if I'm on a 30 second timer to write a paragraph. So these are just nice little applications that can potentially increase your speed day to day and simplify your workflow and hopefully your life as a result. So with that, let me know what you thought of these functions in the comments. Let me know which ones you find more fun and which ones you find more useful. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time and I'll see you here again real soon. Cheers.